make an announcement. I will make an announcement. Okay. Okay. Hey, good morning. Uh, what we want to do is we want to take a deep breath and we want to uh, be mindful. Uh, Eileen Hort, she fell in our parking lot, and there's lots of people giving her attention. We kind of want to let this play itself out and see what her status is. So uh, the band is going to play some music, and uh, we'll have a little bit later start in our service. And uh, I hope you all aren't in a hurry to see any football games or anything like that. Uh, because we're not skimpy, we're not going to skimp on the offering or the sermon, okay? <laughs> All right, there we go. Okay.
Okay, why don't you do the prelude? Do the prelude. Do it, yeah. So much. I think I think our cool factor just went up two points. <laughs> All right. Good morning. Grace to you and peace to you and welcome to you. Uh, Eileen was able to uh, stand up and take a few steps. She's uh, sitting in the golf cart and the EMTs are here and uh, it looks like that she uh, fell, hurt her uh, hurt her knee. That there may be a cut. But uh, we don't think that there's any uh, broken bones or anything. But if we get another update, we will certainly let you know. Uh, but we are uh, optimistic because Eileen, we love her, and she's tough. She's <laughs> tough. I mean, she was a preschool director for how many years? Almost 40 years. you got to be tough to be a preschool director, all right? So uh, we'll be mindful of her. And then also I want you to be mindful of Maurice Seavers, uh, his uh, uh, longtime friend and companion, uh, uh, Louise Land. She died yesterday. She had a stroke, and one of her greatest fears was having a stroke and living for a long time with the effects of that. And she did not have to live for a long time with those effects. She living life on her terms. And uh, so... We will miss her, and yet we understand the blessing of a long life filled with a lot of love, and um, uh, we will uh, be mindful of Maurice as he has this vacuum now in his life. So we want to uh, feel free to send some cards, thinking of you cards and phone calls, and, uh, and, and to visit him at Beatitudes. Uh, uh, 
and, and don't be afraid to yell because he can't hear very well. So uh, just make sure that uh, you communicate your care to him. I call your attention to other announcements. You can take a look at all through the nuggets, all the different things that are going on in our church, and please continue to look for ways that God is calling you to serve and to keep the leadership of our church lifted up in prayer. That is always appreciated. And also we have uh, all these uh, poinsettias, and there will be cards on one of the back tables that will allow uh, you to identify someone that you can deliver a poinsettia to. So if you want to help with the delivery of those, that is always uh, very much appreciated. The six large poinsettias, uh, we are the red ones, uh, leave those alone. <laughs> leave those alone. Uh, we're, we're saving those for Christmas Eve. But we thought it would be nice this year to send the smaller ones uh, to people uh, before before actually Christmas, and uh, that way they have that gift from us, and they know that we're thinking of them. So all of those are the different things that are going on, and uh, again, uh, grateful that uh, I saw there was quite a circle of care and love uh, around Eileen down in the parking lot, so uh, thank you, thank you, Dr. Patricia, for that and being there, as well as the others that were around, Sixto, uh, came from downstairs and was there, and it looked like he picked her up by himself uh, to help help her get on his feet, and uh, lots of hugging in uh, and, and a circle of care around her. So I think that that's a good uh, example of, uh, of who we are as a congregation. So we celebrate that. Well, take a deep breath. Know that you are loved. And we do our best to live out God's truth that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I invite you to stand if you're comfortably able and that we would sing our welcome to each other gathered here in the mystery of the hour. We are changing things up this morning. We, we apologize and are excited. We're going to do this as a round this morning. And so we're going to sing it once together and then... These ladies are going to lead this half to sing the round first, and these folks are going to lead this half into singing the second, and I'm going to bow out so I don't confuse me or you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll sing it once together first. Merry Christmas. Now for our liturgy. We have lit three candles for peace, for joy, for hope. Today we light the fourth candle, the candle of love. This is not the Hallmark Christmas movie candle. This is Mother's Love is instead fierce and strong, issuing marching orders and assigning challenging work. Here anew today, the charge of Mary's fight song. God has scattered the arrogant and pulled the powerful down from their thrones. God has filled the poor with good nourishment and sent the rich away empty. The spirit does not fail to come to the aid of the people. 
God will remember the mercy promised to their ancestors, to Abraham and Sarah and their descendants. God, in this time of preparation and planning, we thank you for the peace, joy, and hope you unfailingly offer us. Refresh our spirits by showing the creative Dust off your weariness and set our shoulders through. Prepare our hearts to be renewed and transferred by you, that we may walk in the light. Our next song is the one that we have done before, uh, but not for a while. So the band will be playing it through one time before we sing the verse. So please stand as you're comfortably able. So this is the time in our service when we share birthdays, anniversaries, or perhaps you were surprised by grace, perhaps you wore a word of comfort to someone, or you were surprised by a word of encouragement from someone else. This is where we share those moments of grace and celebrate the deep, deep goodness of life. If you have such a celebration, I invite you to stand. Let an usher come to you with a microphone so that we can all hear it. And we'll start on this side of the room, and then we will move across to this way. And uh, I think also uh, this is a good time to get an uh, update on Eileen. So when we come around to that, we'll, uh, we'll share that. So we'll start over here. Any celebrations? No? Okay. Uh, my name is Chris Robin. My name is Chris Robbins. Uh, I'm celebrating that my wife Susan and I were able to make it to the impeachment rally at on 24th Street in Camelback on Tuesday night, and it felt like a celebration, like we feel feel, feel here in uh, church, except with a lot more horn honking. Uh, <laughs> it was very loud and amazing. Uh, Susan was found a prominent spot with her uh, impeach and remove sign. And one of my partners told me the next day that he saw us on the local news. And so uh, we, we think we probably had a major impact on the vote the next day. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Betty. Yes, I'm Betty Wolver, and I have a daughter, Diane Demko who has a birthday today. And uh, some of you may remember her. She was a pianist here for several years. Yes, happy birthday. Thank you. Steve. Steve Merrill is my grandfather. Always used to say before Thanksgiving and Christmas, Christmas is coming, the geese are getting fat. Please put a penny in the old man's hat. If you haven't got a, hay, if you haven't got a penny, a halfpenny will do. If you've got a halfpenny, then God bless you. Amen. Thank you. All right. Yes, Kathy. 
Uh, yes, uh, Kathy Miller, and I want to introduce. This is my friend Shatera, and you want to introduce your two. Your okay. <laughs> Hi. You want to say your name? No. Hi, welcome. <laughs> I'm Shatera. Um, this is my son, Zaikari, and my daughter, Zylea. Thank you so much for being here. We're going to celebrate that. Yes, thank you. Ashley. Hi. I want to celebrate my, I gave my, my boyfriend, and I'm one gay and gays. And I wanna you guys say you came back and I wanna celebrate my cousin's birthday is on Tuesday. So thanks. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Welcome. All right. So I'm to give the update about Irene. She's strong and sturdy. She what did I say? Ah. Eileen. Eileen with the L. Um, she slipped off the seat and uh, banged her knee against the, um, sim the um, tar, um, but she's able to extend it and move it, and the ambulance took her away to get a film, so all is well. All right, thank you. <laughs> Let's see, up here. Yes, Linda. Hi, I'm Linda Johnson. Um, I want you all to know, but for three more days, I am 69. <laughs> and then we're going to forget what year it is after that. I know, it's, it's a decade year, you know, on, on Wednesday. <laughs> All right, thank you. Hi, I'm Cindy Gatorna, and um, thank you to anyone that chose a Christmas angel off the tree. I just wanted to share that all those uh, lovely gifts had been delivered in, in good stead to our families. I always, about halfway through that project, wonder what in the world does this have to do with literacy, but... I would like to say that everybody got at least two books, um, thanks to you all, and that um, it's not about literacy so much as creating an environment for learning. And one family came up to me afterwards and the mother said, I'm just so grateful this year because my husband's been in the hospital and this will allow us to have Christmas. So that's the impact you make with that little project. Thank you. Yes, thank you for sharing. Thank you. All right, Carol. Yeah, I've got a second update on Eileen. Uh, she didn't have to go in the ambulance. Her daughter is taking her to get her checked out. So uh, the firefighters lifted her up. And, well, you guys lifted her up, and uh, they helped her into the car. Uh, the other thing is I would like to wish Dr. Becky a happy birthday, because she had a birthday last week. <laughs> oh, happy birthday, Dr. Becky. Yeah. Excellent. Yes, other. Other. I hear somebody. In oh, in the sky. <laughs> thank, thank you, Jesus. All right. Hey, good morning. I'm Brian Monta. I just wanted to celebrate and thank all the staff and volunteers that helped make this year's, which was the 10th annual uh, Solstice Sunset concert a success. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you for your leadership, Brian. Thank you. All right. Scanning, scanning. Any others? Any others? Any others? I feel good. If you're feeling great today, let me hear you say, I feel great. I feel great. See, that's a quarter of the song right there. You guys have got this. You've got it. If you can, you and I are going to leave. The choir's going to echo. And we're going to clap as much as we can. All right? Here we go. I feel good.
I, I, thank you. Thank you for that. The uh, word about life comes from uh, 1 John chapter 4. Uh, this is uh, keeping in line with our Advent uh, journey uh, that um, in terms of movement, movement from conflict to peace, from sorrow to joy, from despair to hope, and, and uh, today from apathy to love. We have come to know and to believe in the love God has for us. God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God and God in them. Love will come to perfection in us when we can face the day of judgment without fear. Because our relation to this world is just like Christ. There is no fear in love, for perfect love drives out fear. To fear is to expect punishment, and anyone who is afraid is still imperfect in love. We love because God first loved us. If you say you love God but hate your sibling or your neighbor, you are a liar. For you cannot love God whom you have not seen if you hate your neighbor whom you have seen. If we love God, we should love our human family as well. For we have this commandment from God. May the spirit of life and love bless the reading, the hearing, the living of a word about life. Amen. Anticipation, our offerings reflect our love for ourselves, our community, and the world. This is Y'all Come, and probably the sweetest one of the season. We're doing Away in a Manger today, so please come and join us.
Good morning. In the last few weeks, I've been offering you an invitation and a promise. And I'm grateful to you for taking this Advent adventure time with me over the last three Sundays. I've asked you to use your imagination to go on a pilgrimage together. The pilgrimage is from brokenness to wholeness. And each week we named a specific way to move from brokenness to wholeness. And looking at the map on the bulletin cover, we can see that we had the opportunity to move from conflict to peace, from sorrow to joy, from despair to hope. And today, the last leg of our pilgrimage, we move from apathy to love. Let me recap just a little bit, that there is no peace without justice, and there is no justice without honesty and courage. This is true on every level of human existence. If there is no justice for my wounded self, there is no peace. If there is no justice with my neighbor, there is no peace. If there is no justice with our planet, there is no peace. Cruelty and exploitation and injustice, it breeds generations of violence and terrorism within ourselves between our neighbors and nations, and with our own only planetary home, the earth. And the Christmas story from Luke tells us that the angels sang. The angels, they broke out of heaven and they sang and they filled the sky and glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Please understand that there is no peace without justice and there is no justice without courage and honesty. The pilgrimage from brokenness to wholeness includes a movement from sorrow to joy and our choir helped fill this place with joy that Sunday. Now we have plenty of reasons to be broken hearted. However, we can remind each other that sorrow can act like blinders on a horse. And like a horse, we can trudge and slog through the same grief paths of life. When we fall into this pattern, we miss the joy and the reasons for joy that are all around us. Ultimately, joy does not come to us from the outside. It grows like a stubborn weed on the inside of us because of the deep giftedness of life. And last week, we explored the pilgrimage of despair to hope. And I shared with you that our capacity for hope is connected to our capacity for being open and experiencing the mystery and the awe of life. And when we cut ourselves off from mystery, we cut ourselves off from hope. Now I know I am making a leap here, a leap of trust. I am deliberately deciding for hope because despite my ignorance, I believe that at the center of all of life there is a mystery, but it is a mystery that reaches out to me and I experience the mysterious heart of reality, not as despair, that destroys, but as love that creates. And so here we are. We are a few days from reaching the destination of our pilgrimage. Our last exploration and Advent spirit talk is moving from apathy to love. 
<sighs> Apathy. Apathy is the state of indifference. Apathy is a lack of emotion, a lack of concern, a lack of interest, a lack of intensity and interest about life. Apathy is emotional detachment. Now we learn in recovery programs that detachment from our loved one's destructive behavior, that can be healthy, and it is, but when such detachment slips into cut off, emotional cut off, when it slips into, I don't know, a, a, a kind of, I, 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 I just cannot give a damn anymore, well, then it has, in fact, slipped into neurosis. Apathy is not a natural state for us as human beings. We live and breathe and feel deeply, and while we may pride ourselves on our thinking and our reasoning, we live where we feel. And when we are not feeling, we are not really living. I love it when nature provides an amen corner. <laughs> Where is it? There. Amen. Amen. As I said, that when we are not feeling, we are not really living. Now, Peg and I have been married 40 years. And in that time, we have always loved each other, but we have not always been in love with each other. We have not always been in love every day of those 40 years. The most hurtful moments of our relationship are when one or both of us have grown complacent and we lack interest and we lack intensity. It is not hate of each other that would hurt the most. It would be apathy for each other that would hurt the most. And such apathy would be symptomatic of deeper challenges. A child, a child will be hurt by the anger of their parent. But a child would rather have the angry attention of the parent than the inattentive apathy and disinterest of the parent. <coughs> Pardon me. The death spiral of our social institutions, such as democracy, is not that we hate politicians or political process. The death spiral of our apathy that keeps us from exercising our power to vote, and it is our apathy that keeps us from the appropriate outrage when voters are suppressed. Another social institution is the church. The decline of mainline Protestant churches is not that people hate us. That would be easier to address. Our challenge is more difficult. Our challenge is that people do not even give us a thought because they do not understand or care about the role we play in their lives and the role of a social pioneer and prophet that we play in the fabric of our society. Perhaps all the layers are peeled back, that when all the layers are peeled back, we would discover that apathy is a defense mechanism. Perhaps apathy is a dark refuge from fear and disappointment and fear of disappointment. In a Christian tradition, as indicated in the word about life, fear could be read as the opposite of love. It's easy to think of hate and love as opposites, but I don't think this is the case. To reduce love and fear 
as opposites would be to miss the wisdom of today's reading. We have heard the expression of being frozen by fear. And I can remember as a child that when I would have nightmares, I could not move and I could not scream. I was paralyzed. I know that as an adult there have been a handful of times when fear kept me from acting or speaking out for what is right. I allowed myself to be paralyzed by fear. We have heard that we should not fall into the fallacy of paralysis, of analysis, and I think this is true. But the culprit may not be overthinking. The real culprit might be fear. As long as we are gathering information and making analysis, we don't have to act, and therefore we don't fail. Perhaps love casts out fear because we love the potential end result more than our own comfort and security. The paralysis of fear results in a state of apathy. Love casts out fear because the strength of love overcomes the paralysis of fear. It is a vicious circle. When we miss the opportunities of love, we will emotionally medicate ourselves with apathy. And when we medicate ourselves with apathy, we will miss the opportunities of love. When we are afraid to love, we will use apathy to put our love into a coma. When we put our love into a coma, we will miss the heights and depths of life and live a living death. Fear is such a thief. Afraid of the dark, we miss the stars. Afraid of the water, we may miss the joy of sailing and skinny dipping. Afraid of other people's opinions, we may miss the beauty of our own uniqueness. Afraid of groups of people, we may miss the party. Afraid of failing, we may miss the sense of accomplishment that comes with success. Afraid of big, scary old men in red suits and beards, we may miss Santa Claus or Steve Merrill. <laughs> Afraid of life and death and love, we will miss what it means to be most profoundly human. This is the tragedy of fear and its paralysis. And love promises to cast out all fear. So where do we end up? Where do we end up at the end of our Advent pilgrimage? What do we find at the end of our movements from conflict to peace? I hope you find peace. From sorrow to joy, I hope you find joy. From despair to hope, I hope you have hope. And from apathy to love, I hope you have love and courage. What is it that we stumble upon as we do this pilgrimage? A little more hope, a little more healing, a little more strength. We leave the question open. On Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, our Advent pilgrimage ends. But hopefully we come to know the spirit of life and love in such a transformative way that while the Advent pilgrimage ends, our life's pilgrimage has the possibility of birth and beginning again. Amen. I ask that you would stand and join me in the words for mission. <clears throat> Thank you.
Beloveds, be strong and of good courage that love may abound. Hear this good news. God's love is at work in us and through us. These are the times. We are people. All of creation is blessed. May we love all and serve all. God be with you. And also with you. Amen.